Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to print from within the Vice emulator, so let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are inside of the Vice emulator and something you're probably going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Preferences then go to Settings. And then you're going to want to go down to Peripheral Devices and select Printer. Across the top here we have the different IEC devices we can have printers on. We're just going to leave it on 4 and then we've got to select a couple things. We want to enable File System Access and we want to enable IEC device. These usually won't be enabled by default. But the driver is basically what type of printer we'll try to emulate. First thing I'm going to show you is how to print to like a text file. So we're going to select ASCII for the driver and we're going to select text for the output mode. The viceprint.out down here is basically the file name that we want to call our output file. Close out of that and now let's load up basic program to print. Okay, so here's a little program I wrote just for this video. There are a few things we're going to pay attention to. See how in line 20 has those like inverted symbols? Well, in Commodore Basic, as many of you probably know, you can include other key presses other than just text characters in your print statements. So we can include other keys like clear screen and stuff like cursoring around the screen. In this case, it clears the screen, changes the text color to red, and then cursors down five lines. Also of note is that in these next few print statements, there's also several special Petsky graphics characters used to make the box. Okay, so let's get printing or virtual printing. So anyway, so first we want to go open 4 comma 4. This opens a connection between port 4 and dev IEC device 4. Now we're going to go CMD4 which diverts all output from basic to port 4. And then we're going to type list. It didn't appear on screen. But that's because the output has been diverted to port 4. And it's being sent to the printer and now it's printing. As you can see we have our cursor back and now we can go print number 4 which that'll cut off communication to the printer. And then if we go close for, that basically just closes off the uh, port four. So now that we're done that, we can go into our uh, vice bin folder. It's the same folder as where the vice executable can be found. And you'll find a file that says viceprint.out. So we can click on it here. And there are a few things of note. Normally, it's actually a .out file. You can go into properties and change it into a .txt file, or you can do like I did, and just select it to open .out files in Notepad. And then as you say, you know, always use Notepad to open .out files, and it works just fine. So as you see, there's a few things. In line 20, it just appears as two dots. And for our little box here, basically all the Petsky characters that don't actually exist in the ASCII character set. So a lot of special graphics characters just appear as dots. Some of them appear as letters, like the lines would appear as C. Interestingly enough, the how you get that special character is by typing shift C in uppercase mode. And if you're in lowercase mode, it'll be in uppercase C. So let's show you how to preserve the pesky characters. So we're now we're gonna go MBS803 and we're gonna select graphics for our output. Okay, so now let's print it again, and I'm using the final cartridge 3 here, so we can just type plist, which is a hand, really handy little thing it has built in, so you don't have to type out all the other commands just to print your uh, basic program. Okay, so the next thing is, we're, is it leaves a .bitmap file this time, but it says it's corrupted. And if we go into properties, as you can see, it is zero bytes in size. So that's weird. Well, I found you have to actually close the vice emulator and then they see you got a preview there and then it'll work and actually generate the file. And zooming in, we can see that uh, our Petsky characters are all preserved, but the box is a little misaligned there. Don't know what's going on there, but all of our Petsky characters are preserved and it's a authentic font that you get on the MPS 803. But yeah, this is a bitmapped image, so you can't like copy and paste it somewhere else. But that's probably something you're probably more likely to use. MPS 803 is not the only one we can emulate. It's also the Star Micronics NL10. That one behaves a little bit differently, so let me show you. 
So I've gone through the printing process with my uh, emulated printer set to the NL10, and as you can see, it looks a little bit different. Um, the font's a bit different, the color's a bit different, not quite as like dark, but notice line 20, how it actually has the uh, sort of like the keys presses that were being represented, so they're not represented by the uh, inverted pesky characters. They're actually, you know, like CLR for clear screen and then change the color to red and then cursor down three lines. It's actually sort of like shown in brackets there, which is really handy for if you're just like reviewing a basic program. Our uh, little box there is also kind of misaligned, but yeah, that, that can be really handy. So something to keep in mind, especially for if you want to like go through a basic program and review it. Okay, so what about printing graphics? Well, I've got a classic print program here called The Print Shop by Broderbund Software from 1985. Let's go ahead and print a banner here. So now let's select a font, type our text, and add a graphic. And now let's print it. We want to make sure that we're set to one of the graphics printers and that our output is set to graphics. I'm just doing the MPS 803. And uh, yeah, we can print it. Now that it's done printing, we can see that it appears as four individual files. This sort of corresponds to the four individual sheets that it would print out on your printer, if you had a real printer. And uh, yeah, on old school dot matrix printers, like each sheet of paper was sort of connected to each other, so it would be one continuous banner, but here it's four separate sheets. I've taken these four images and I've stitched them together, and here's what it looks like. So uh, yeah, that's how that works. So let's mess around with print shop a bit more. And I created this little uh, sign here, and let's print it off. And so here's the resulting files, and as you can see, there's two files, when there really should only be one sheet. So the one file has the main sign on it, and this other file just has like a line on top of it. And you can see the border line that I selected is just sort of cut off from the bottom on the first image, and it appears on the second image. I don't know why this occurs, it's probably just a bug. Kind of annoying, but it's a thing to be aware of. Like you can take those two images and then sort of stitch them together in like Photoshop or something. Or you could just not have a border, and you won't have to worry about it. It's only stuff that's near the very edge. Okay, so there's a few odds and ends I want to cover here. In the printer settings, there's a thing called real device access. This should like print on your real actual modern printer, but I found it actually just crashes the Vice emulator when I try to use it. Vice can also emulate a user port printer, and using that is it's basically the same as just using a standard IEC printer, so yeah. But too bad I couldn't get the real system access going, but anyway, you can just take the files that it produces and print them off manually. Okay, and uh, there's our sign. I printed out my modern laser printer there. And uh, yeah, not quite the same experience as a dot matrix printer, but it's a lot faster. Now that we got this sign, we can put it anywhere we want. Yeah. Okay, so that's just about it for printing from within uh, the Vice emulator. But there's one more thing you're probably wondering. Remember that program I showed you at the beginning? This one? You're probably wondering what it does. Well, it's actually partially a basic program and partially a machine language program. The first little bit is a basic program, the bottom part is actually machine code, and the top part just displays the subscribe box and then pokes the uh, machine code higher up into memory to be executed. And here it is when we run it. As you can see, it just has a subscribe button, which is something that you should go click. And then this little bar, which is just using some raster interrupts to put two colors on the border, which is something that I think is kind of cool. And I just decided to throw in completely randomly, so yeah. And here's the assembly code for the raster interrupts. So anyway, thanks for watching.